Hello, COE. Um, I've created a YouTube channel for us. Um, I'm going to be posting a lot of guides and information that we have on there for everyone to be able to have a look at. And I'm going to start creating videos like this one whereby I can go through the user interface and show you all the different things that are available to you in all the different faucets of facets of the game. Um, so the reason for this video is that we have Kingdom vs Kingdom coming up. If we go to our benefits here, we can see in the activity calendar the War of the Kingdoms event. You can see here it starts on the 10th of, of May, finishes on the 12th of May. So that allows for one day of warring and another day of diamond mine collections and I believe a preparation phase as well. Um, yep. Um, so that's where you can check where the event starts. I believe it's Saturday reset time. Um, that's GMT zero. So we're now. <clears throat> 3.30 GMT. So I wanted to go through a couple of the dynamics with you about how the KVK works. Um, there's some small things to note like the shelter. If you have troops in your shelter before you transfer from one kingdom to the other, it will kick your troops out of the shelter. So it's really important that you know before after you travel to the opposite kingdom that you quickly go to your shelter put some troops back in there that's if you're trying to hide your troops or some of your troops at least and then you know while you're in that kingdom that you're safe ideally if you're traveling between kingdoms you should be using a bubble anyway so you've got a chance to quickly put some troops into the shelter um, the only time you wouldn't be using a bubble and you're using a transfer would be to say if the enemy has set a rally against you and you needed to cancel the rally which can be done by transferring the kingdoms twenty four hours before we are able to enter the enemy kingdom we will get, have a button appear just up here um, with all our other buttons it will say war of the kingdoms it will have a countdown timer at this time we'll be able to go to the world map and we'll be able to see which kingdom it is that we are up against <clears throat> even without knowing what kingdom we're up against you know we we are able to go to a kingdom for example, um, let's go to Kingdom 127. Go on. The Russians own the server. WD Star. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Anyways, they war with the Koreans um, just about every week for King's Landing. They're not very strong. When we know who our enemy is, we can go to the kingdom and we can go see the alliances in the kingdom. We can click on their players and see their players equipment so on we can go through their members list we can see what players they have this alliance has an 88 million player still quite small um, 2.7 billion power the koreans um, we can get a gauge from the player's profile depending on the equipment that they're wearing whether or not they're using a certain troop for their front line or whether or not they're in war spec whether they're in economy spec um, we can go around the whole server and scout beforehand 24 hours beforehand as to who's there how strong they are and what we can decide there is a plan for there is there is many strategies that are adopted in the kingdom vs kingdom um, point collection is based on holding the enemy well 
holding any castles, um, gathering in the enemy lands, and troop elimination points. Now, personally, my preferable playstyle, and, and this is one that I've been pushing, I know, and I haven't spoken much about the other playstyles, is gathering in the enemy land, because there's been a few KVK where I have not actually fought, um, being a much smaller player in other kingdoms. Um, it's been more beneficial for me to simply use a bubble, for the whole event and just gather in King's Landing. So what I'd do is I'd just find myself a spot in King's Landing. I'd find um, where there's some iron mines clustered together, like say here for example. I'd just pop on in with my bubble on and send out gathering. And I'd, I'd have to watch them because I'll have attacks coming from all different places on my gathering site. But under bubble I can just recall my troops and send them back out to another node, or decide if I decide if I want to play cat and mouse with him or not. Um, and it's a good strategy to play cat and mouse with the enemy on in their lands, because that's then a player that's in their own lands, not gathering in our lands, that is unbubbled trying to attack us, and that leaves opportunities available for some of our larger players to come and ideally take that player out of the Kingdom vs. Kingdom event by destroying his troops or otherwise destroying his will to play. Um, when gathering, it's, it's, it's really beneficial to ensure that you change your equipment. If you have the Huntsman set, um, you can replace all your items uh, depending on what level it is, it's, it's actually a really good bonus for gathering. Uh, the other thing to note as well is that you shouldn't be needing to do constructions or research during the event. So we can use these points that we've got on, on our economy tree and we can put them into army gathering or, sorry, army gathering. <laughs> there I go again, army carrying capacity. Or gathering speed. Um, so there's two, two for each of these. There's the army carrying one, gathering speed one, and then there's gathering speed two, and army carry capacity two. It's good to use the army carry capacity because, like it says here, it says a hundred percent. So if your troops can carry a hundred percent more, that's essentially half the troops that you need to send to a gathering site, which essentially is half the troops you are risking uh, on a site. The other thing to note with gathering speed is to be using one of these scrolls. Gathering speed harvest scroll for 24 hours. Um, I tend to use them all the time, so I've just activated one there. Um, whenever I, I go do gathering, I pretty much always have one active. I built up 83 of them. I'm not sure from where. They just appear out of nowhere. If you don't have any of them, you can go to the Alliance Store and you can go to Resource. Not Resource, you can go to Speed Up. And you can buy one for 30,000 Alliance Coins. So that's not even a day's worth of Alliance Coins. You can get one for 7 days for... 130,000 Alliance points rounded off. So they're very cheap, um, very effective to use, and at the end of the day you're going to be getting far more points. Something else to note is when the Kingdom opens and we have the chance to go over there, on your little banner here, you'll have the ability to use a random transfer to transfer between the kingdoms. You can, however, skip this and click in the enemy lands and use, use a precise transfer, and then you can land where it is that you want to land. Um, another thing that I haven't touched on yet, and there's, there's kind of a good reason for it, is our military strategy. Um, for one, 
it's not really possible to go highly in depth into the military strategy at this stage without knowing who our enemy is. It's very situational. Uh, we need to see who our enemy is before we can decide exactly what plans we want to make. I mean, there's so many strategies that we can adopt. Um, and we will use the ones that will best fit us. And, and with some luck, we'll be able to target a couple of whales and zero them. Um, or better yet, hold both of the King's Landings under the COE name. Um, I expect that other alliances will also be doing their best to hold other castles. Um, however, I can't speak for them. It's, it's not, not my authority. Um, I'm sure they'll be doing the best that they can, and I'm also sharing information with them to help better their gameplay. Um, so it's important that at the start date, on the Saturday reset, I would like as many of us as possible to be in the voice chat <clears throat> and being ready to jump over to the enemy kingdom and see if we can take advantage of that first hour and see how many people we can catch off guard without a bubble and um, utilize that first hour. After we have we've done a, a bit of fighting, we're going to look at trying to hold King's Landing. Um, it's important that we use a warrior's summons during this time if you are trying to hold king's landing uh increases entire army's capacity by 20 percent 50 percent 75 percent these can be bought in the diamond store 75 percent has to be won by events like the elite trials this is important because it means that each person will be able to send more troops into reinforce king's landing um, the points are determined in King's Landing by how many troops are in there per five minutes. So the less people with more troops that we can have means less people unbubbled. And those people that are unbubbled really need to focus on sending their troops away from their castles so that if a billion player drops in and starts attacking all our castles, it doesn't matter because our troops will be off marching towards a node. Um can't can't have your troops hit while you're marching so but i mean with all this said you know it's really about people finding their play style and how they can work in and perhaps it's it's rather uh, preferable for a lot of people to use a bubble and gather throughout the event to ensure minimal losses and maximum return um, win or lose, we will get diamond mines. Level 1's to freeze if we lose. Level, level 1's to 5 if we win. Level 5 has a far greater um, collection rate. So it would be good. Um, and if you do lose all your troops during the battle, don't be disheartened. Uh, they're, they're only troops. We will rebuild. Um, there's a lot of effort I've seen going into people's statistics and research. And that's what's most important. Um, so I'll be available for the whole 24-hour duration of the event in the voice chat uh, for anyone who would like to join me. And I, I request that everyone who's available for it, however long you're available for, to come and join us and see how we can work in together to achieve our goal. And um, best of luck for KVK anyone. I think if we stick... Stick to a few of the essentials, we can look at a more precise plan once we find out who our enemy is. We'll have a, we'll have a day to work out how we want to try approach the situation. Might turn out that the only only strategy that we can adopt is, is gathering. Um, but we'll see when that time comes. Um, thanks for listening, and yeah, hit the like button. I think that's what they say on YouTube, and I'll have more videos available for everyone to see, all in reference to the library and our guides that we have available. I'll go through and make a whole bunch. Thank you very much.